Hello, all, and uh, a warm welcome to another session of the YM Professional Technical uh, Webinar Sessions. Today, um, as is always said, um, a sound mind is in a healthy body. All we do in our industry is constant exposures. We are always exposed, exposed to radiation and other things that our mind don't even fathom or our eyes don't even see. Today we are very grateful and then honored to have a webinar on the, the role of exposure assessment in total worker health. It's going to be given by no other person than Steve Chan, who has about 15 years experience practicing this. He's seen it all in both the mining and then the oil and gas side. Steve was uh, until recently at the um, Gulf Force, and now he is with um, the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company. Is there actually there as an um, industrial hygienist? We're actually waiting to get more people to log in, but then I think we've gotten enough to start with. So without wasting any more time, I will push everything over to Steve, who by the way has an MS in quality management from the University of the West of Scotland. So Steve, um, if you are ready to shoot, uh, I would want you to take it away. Okay. Okay, let me quickly share my slide and then uh, you can kick start for the day. Okay, good afternoon to you all. And um, as uh, Lawrence Riley said, um, today's session, it's um, on the role of uh, exposure assessment uh, in total uh, worker health. And uh, thanks to the organizers, um, for giving me the platform to share with you the role of exposure assessment in total worker health. And uh, many thanks to my audience um, for making time to participate in this section. Uh, let's make this section an interactive one. And um, during this section, um, I'll provide some highlights of total worker health, uh, which is a trademark idea from NIOSH and CDC. Uh, NIOSH is National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health and CDC is a center for disease control. I'll also be sharing with you where the safety professionals and the industrial units um, fit in the concept and also the relevance of exposure assessment to the sources of the, of the total worker health program. And some bits of um, areas and tools and resources that uh, you can actually uh, grab you know, just to learn more on the total worker health. I know this session will be a review to some of you, especially those uh, who have come across the ideas of total worker health and also new to others who are yet to understand um, the ideas. Uh, and approaches of the Total Worker Health Program. Ideally, uh, many, ideally, many of the of the ideas of the Total Worker Health present today are not new. Um, So ideally, um, many of the other ideas of the total worker health present today are not new. 
and um, and it does not but it does prevent us with another opportunity as HSC professionals and health practitioners to implement this concept as an integrated work. So as this section progresses, uh, you realize that the total worker health is an integrated framework that uh, argues for cross disciplinary and holistic action around um, worker health and uh, well-being improvement. Uh, this is going to be our agenda for the day, total worker health. You look at where does industrial hygiene fit. Uh, you look at the, the relevance of exposure assessment and how and where to learn more, uh, which I just uh, highlight. Let's do this full, um, and I want you. I want you to share your thoughts uh, with the chat box. Um, a is this is all new to me. Uh, B is I have heard of this concept, but I'm not sure how they relate to IH, which is industrial hygiene. C is I'm pretty familiar with the concept, but I did I did like to know more about the role of the IH. And the D is I'm very knowledgeable about total health exposure, total worker exposure, and uh, but I want to learn everything I can. So uh, please get to the chat box. As I said, we have to make it more interactive. Go to the chat box and uh, let's let's get your views on uh, what you think. Yes, we still have some few people to to drop in their thoughts. Uh, then we can we can continue from there. Okay, so uh, looking at the looking at the chat, uh, you realize that um, we have a mixture of people um, who are uh, aware of the of the total worker health concepts, and uh, we do also have people who are who are not familiar with the total worker health concept, and uh, we also have people who also want to learn more on the total worker health concepts and approaches. Ideally, um, if you look at the total worker health concept, um, in 2011, uh, the NIOSH, which is the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, um, implemented uh, this uh, NIOSH total worker health program. And uh, this didn't start from 2011, far back 2003, a lot of efforts of advocating for the integration of occupational safety and, and health protection with workplace in order to promote worker health and well being started. So there have been a lot of work in trying to see how we can have an integrated framework for um, to protect the health of the worker. But in 2011, uh, NIOSH were able to advocate and um, come out with this uh, total worker health program. Uh, let me also emphasize that the total worker health approach focuses and prioritizes a hazard free work environment for all workers. That is the very reason why it brings together all the aspects of work integrated that collectively address worker safety, the health, and the well being, and ensure that um, we have an injury and illness prevention. 
program across all our workplace. Let's not forget that the success of the program also requires information and practical solutions to the health, safety, and well being challenges that confront workers. So, if you look at the presentation, you realize that we have fundamentals of total worker health approaches. And in these fundamentals, we have essential elements for advancing worker health, safety, and well being. Fundamentals of the total worker health approaches is just a practical starting point for em employers, workers, or any other professionals who is interested in implementing the worker safety and health programs that align with the total worker health approach. So if you want to start implementing the NIOSH total worker health approach, then the fundamentals of the total worker health is what you need to actually begin with. So uh, let me quickly touch on the, the major elements. With the fundamentals, we have uh, five um, elements. The first one is demonstrating leadership commitment to worker safety and health at all levels of our organization. And as I said, this is not something new. I mean, um, we all know that uh, in our occupational health and safety management system, uh, leadership commitment is the key. You know, without leadership commitment to our health and safety program, it's very difficult for us to achieve the success of the program. It has always been the backbone. So it's not something that is, is, is new to us. Um, we need to ensure that um, the work environment is designed in such a way that it will eliminate and re reduce safety and health hazards and promote worker well-being. So that is the, the second element. We need to make sure that all our workplace designs is such that is going to eliminate the hazards and also promote worker well-being. The third element that I want to mention is promotion and supporting of worker engagement throughout the program design and implementation. So if you intend to go, if you intend to implement the total worker health approach, then you need to be able to provide the opportunity for worker, for workers engagement. The fourth one is on the ensure confidentiality and privacy of workers is very key. And it's one of the, uh, the elements. And uh, the last one is to integrate relevant systems to advance worker well being. So um, it's not only integrating the system, but you need to make sure that whatever systems that we are integrating serve the purpose of um, advancing the worker well being. So we have a worksheet one and worksheet two. And, um, at the end of the section, um, I'll show you some of the websites that you can actually get some of this checklist to, to help you to um, implement the Total Worker Health, NICE Total Worker Health Program. Um, that is, if you want to align your occupational health and management system with the Total Worker Health uh, uh, approach. So uh, these are some of the checklists that you can actually use uh, in trying to start up uh, your Total Worker Health Program. Uh, as per definition, um, NIOSH defines total worker health as policies, programs, practices that integrate protection from work-related safety and health hazards with the promotion of injury and illness prevention efforts to advance worker well-being. Um, if, if you look at this definition, uh, what I wanted to actually share with you was that um, uh, there is always a holistic understanding of the factors that contribute to worker well-being. Uh, these are some of the, the, the some of the factors weren't actually uh, taking a very good um, uh, consideration of them as something that can actually affect the health of the worker. I mean, uh, we were always looking at certain physical and chemical agents that are in the workplace that can actually affect the health of the worker. There are certain factors that were not actually um, much concerned with, with, with that. And um, that is why we also have in this section so that um, by the end of the section, we'll be able to appreciate where and where all these things uh, falls. 
one might ask, why total worker health? Uh, it's the same thing that uh, one to my ask, why are we having so many development in occupational health and safety field? Um, we, we can all acknowledge that even despite improvement in our occupational safety health over the last several decades, workers continue to suffer from work-related illnesses, injuries, and death. Okay, so, uh, so far as that our workers are still suffering from work-related illnesses, injuries, and death, there is a need for us to continue putting in programs and strategies that will help to safeguard the health and the safety of our workers. With reference to the ILO statistics, disease related to uh, work cause most death among workers. Hazardous substances alone are estimated to cause 651,279 deaths per year. With reference from ILO statistics website, the ILO also estimate that 2.3 million women and men around the world succumb to work-related accidents and diseases every year. And this corresponds to over 6,000 deaths every single day. Okay, so in terms of uh, looking at globally, you know, there are around 340 million occupational accidents and 160 million victims of work-related illnesses annually. Uh, sometimes it's very difficult. I mean, if you come to our, our part of the world, it's very difficult to, to get the uh, estimation of um, occupational related mortality and morbidity, you know, because uh, we have issues when it comes to uh, data availability, the quality and the correlation, um, so far as Africa is concerned. However, in other some single countries, know where systems are working you can actually you can actually get some of these statistics so even though we are having the statistics from ILO um, I bet you um, it's just a lot of countries that are not even factored it in because of um, challenges of data availability so in spite of this uh, we are looking for a very positive outlook by adapting the, the total worker health holistic approach uh, which actually encompasses all the functions of occupational health and safety to prevent this increasing workers' risk of disease by both exposures to occupational hazards and uh, risk-related behaviors. Why are we saying integrated approach to total worker health? That is a table. Everybody is going to have a table. Everybody is going to have um, a share to contribute to be able to achieve this. We have the wellness. I mean, if you go to most sites, we are actually work, uh, running a wellness program, well-being program. Uh, we have safety program. Uh, the workers are stakeholders. The management are stakeholders. So all what we are looking for is that we're looking for the health practitioners, the safety practitioners, the workers themselves, and the management for them to all of them to have their table, sit, sit, and um, ensure that we work together to uh, protect the, the, the health of our workers. I think from, the, from, the, from my introduction, I made it clear that um, the, the total worker health is an integrated framework that cuts across disciplinary. You know? So it's not something that it's, uh, it's reliance on only uh, health practitioners alone or only industrial hygienists, so only uh, the safety people, only the HR, the management, and the workers themselves, all of them, we need to contribute our quota to make sure that um, the health of the people who work for us are protected. So um, which of the following um, total worker health issues are relevant to your work? Um, I'm not going to go through all this. Uh, this is something that I wanted to share with you so that um, you can actually uh, go through it whenever you are less busy. I mean, it's on the uh, NIOSH website and uh, you'll be able to um, get yourself acquainted with uh, some of the issues that is relevant uh, to advancing the worker well-being using the total worker health approaches. Uh, the, the first, um, the first uh, area of concern that uh, I wanted to highlight, which is has to do more on, 
on the industrial hygiene domain is prevention and control of hazards and exposures. So if you look at the, the, the first the first item is talking about biological agents, the chemicals, the economic factors, the physical agent, the psychosocial factors, then um, psychosocial factors, uh, risk assessment and management. So um, this alone tells you that uh, in terms of the uh, issues that are of a key in advancing the worker well-being, um, industrial hygiene plays a key role in terms of preventing and controlling of hazards and exposures. So you can actually go through. We have um, leadership. We have built environmental support. We have compensation and benefit. We have community support, changing workforce, demographics, uh, policy issues, and new employment patterns. So all these things constitute, you know, as a key, uh, so far as um, a total worker health is, is concerned. So uh, the question here is that uh, where does IH fit in the total worker health? Uh, I think in the earlier poll uh, that we did, um, we had some people who were wondering where the, the IH fits uh, in this concept. So um, Part of our IH practice, where will our priority most centered? I mean, this is the question that uh, I probably ask people who are into uh, industrial hygiene and uh, they are here with us. Uh, will our focus be on the work? Will our focus or our priority be on the workplace? Um, our priority will be on the worker. Can we get to the chat box? And uh, let's see, uh, let's just take a minute and see where do you think our priority will be most centered? The work, the workplace, or the worker? Let's share our thoughts on the chat box. Okay, so um, we are we we are getting we are getting quite a good feedback. Um, uh, some are some are advocating for the worker. We have some are also suggesting that uh, our priority uh, is going to be all all the three. Uh, let me see. We have worker. We have all. Um, is anyone coming with more worker or worker? Okay, we have workplace. You're also getting workplace and uh, the worker, worker should be, should, all should be equal, okay. Let's see if you have more, okay. Okay, we have the worker. So uh, let's discuss how this, uh, how uh, this relates to health. So um, if, if, if we are looking at um, which role does the IH play, we can also look at how does this, uh, these three items relate to, 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 to the health. Um, our traditional occupational health and safety protection programs, um, in terms of work, you know, our, our, our occupational health and safety programs uh, primarily is concentrated on ensuring that the work is safe and that uh, the workers are protected from, from risks that might arise from the work itself. But within the, within the concept of the total worker health, uh, it does acknowledge that work influences the health. So that is where we also have the linkage. We have work and health. So the work that we're doing influences the health in many ways. And you can agree with me. I mean, so far as wages, so far as hours of work, so far as workload, so far as stress levels, you know, 
worker relationships, all these things have an, have an influence on our health. So you can't run away from the way that we do that. Look, the work has an influence on our health. I believe you all agree with me that there has been a lot of emerging evidence supporting that the impact of these factors on health cannot be disputed. So uh, the work itself has a bit of influence on, um, on, on, on our health. For example, I mean, uh, work-related risk factors such, such as sleep disorders, cardiovascular disease, depression, uh, stress, obesity, and many more, okay, are some of the, are some of the um, conditions that we can actually attribute to the kind of work that we do. Uh, with reference to the, uh, the CDC, the CDC has a, a workplace health model. And from the model, uh, it relates the workplace as an important setting for health protection. So when you come to the workplace, you realize that from the workplace, it's always the important setting for health protection, health promotion, and disease prevention program. Why, why is it so? It is so because uh, wherever that we are working, uh, the employer has the responsibility to ensure that the health of the people who are working there are protected. So because the employers have that responsibility to ensure that people working in the, in the setting, you know, there is a kind of um, a relationship between the workplace and the health. Because uh, if the workplace if the workplace is safe, automatically the worker too will be safe. Okay, so remember the first group of the of, of issues relevant to the total worker health perspective relate to the workplace and to protect the health of the worker. Where does it fall? It falls within the domain of industrial hygiene practice. Okay, so if you look at it in terms of the workplace, if the industrial hygienist can, can evaluate okay, and ensure that certain controls are put in place to protect the health of the workers. Automatically, there's no worker who is going to suffer from any occupational related uh, diseases. So when you fix the workplace, you fix the worker. Ideally, if the workplace is safe and healthy, then the worker will be also safe and healthy. So you realize that um, in terms of the how the industrial hygiene fits into the concept. It fits very well. So far as the work, so far as the workplace, and so far as the worker is, is, is concerned. Now uh, let's look at the total worker exposure. Uh, we have uh, something we call total worker exposure in our field. And um, as, as you all know, uh, the, anytime that you mention um, uh, worker exposure, what comes to your mind is, is industrial hygiene, or what comes to your mind is industrial hygienists. And uh, if, 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 if I have to recap our practice, uh, our practice has always been to uh, anticipate, to evaluate, and to control um, a workplace hazard. So anytime you talk about exposure, then uh, occupational hygienist or occupational hygiene practice comes to mind. And why is it, uh, why is it a, a key part of uh, uh, the NIOSH Total Worker Health Program? Because it's a key subset of the program. So if it's a key subset of the program, then automatically uh, it tells you the role that industrial hygiene plays in it. Now, when we talk about, um, when we talk about industrial hygiene, you know, the, our, our objective, the objective of the industrial hygiene is to promote a healthy work environment for employees. And the ultimate objective of the total worker health is also to promote a whole worker health. So as I mentioned before, you can actually see that uh, both of them are, are related. That is why the total worker exposure becomes a subset of the NIOSH uh, total worker health program. And because of the critical role that uh, we play in contributing to the total worker health. Uh, we have a lot of associations such as American Industrial Hygiene Association, which is also doing a great job by establishing a task force to ensure that we also contribute in terms of resources, tools, and educational materials to support the 
Total Worker Health Program. I mentioned the total worker exposure. The total worker exposure only focuses on the assessment of worker exposures, both in and beyond the workplace. So if um, uh, somebody wants to understand what the total worker exposure is, the total worker uh, uh, exposure is only um, a type of assessment that uh, focuses on worker exposures, both in and beyond the workplace. And uh, we have the uh, total worker exposure to as a subset of total exposure health. Is we have a total exposure health, we have a total worker health, and we have a total worker exposure. When we talk about total exposure health, a total exposure health predicts and prevents diseases and evaluates workplace and environmental exposures and lifestyle to improve health and well-being through integrated health promotion and protection. So you realize that every, everything there with regards to the total worker exposure, with regards to total exposure health has component that falls under the industrial or occupational hygienist domain. The total uh, exposure health actually also considers exposures from the occupational, the environmental, the lifestyle, and the clinical. Someone might ask that why, why do we need all these approaches, like the total worker exposure, like the total exposure health and all those things? Yes, we need them because um, the nature of work is changing, the nature of our workforce is changing, the nature of our workplace are rapidly changing. So there is a need for us to also introduce systems and strategies that will help us to be able to address all the all the hazards and risks that are associated with the rapid changing of our of our of the nature of work and the workforce and the workplace as well. Uh, I know that uh, when it comes to our, our part of the world, uh, we have a bit of challenges um, in terms of uh, the uh, the practice of industrial hygiene. Um, we all, we always want to make sure that uh, we we protect the people who work for us. But uh, if you come to, as I said, in our part of the world, uh, the challenges that we have in terms of uh, IH practice is due to the backing of um, regulatory standards, okay? Because uh, we don't have um, well-established uh, regulatory standards and, uh, and uh, backing for, uh, for the practice of IH, uh, it's, 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 always, it's, it's always shadowed by safety management and well-being. Uh, so um, it's, it's a high time. It's a high time that uh, we need to address this with the, with the stringent uh, policy development uh, because uh, IH plays a critical role so far as workers' health protection is concerned. There's no way we can um, substitute the practice of industrial hygiene with safety or the practice of industrial hygiene with um, with well-being, I mean, we all saw from the from the integrated framework that uh, everyone has a role to play. So um, it's it's something that it's a challenge that we really have to work so hard as stakeholders to make sure that um, uh, we address this. And uh, if if we if we are serious to um, ensure that uh, we protect the health of our workers, then uh, we should put in a lot of effort and make sure that um, we give a bit of uh, recognition to industrial hygiene practice, just like uh, we've given recognition to safety. And this way, at least uh, we'll be very optimistic that um, going forward, um, we will be able to protect the, the health of the people who work so hard for us. Uh, it, it's, it's sometimes uh, this, um, uh, this situation bothers and worries me a lot um, because um, uh, if you look at it, someone who comes to work for an organization and um, he suffers any, any injury, uh, talk of uh, medical treated injury, talk of a lost time injury, uh, she, goes to, she goes home, get treated, comes and he's working. You know, um, you get somebody who is suffering from a lost time injury. He goes home for three days, four days, he comes back and he's working. And uh, you get somebody who is suffering from um, occupational related diseases. 
and he stays home. He can't come back to work. You need to spend money on medicals. You need to spend money on retraining for replacement. You need to spend money uh, to treat himself for the rest of, her, of his life. You know, and uh, we all know that some of these occupational related diseases are irreversible and uh, the person might end up even losing life. And that also affects the family as well. So if you look at the cost of somebody suffering from occupational related diseases compared to somebody who has, uh, who, who has, uh, who has gotten himself injured for a uh, lost time or medical treated, you can't, it's incomparable, you can't compare it. So uh, it's a high time that uh, we, we true our weights, you know, and ensuring that um, industrial hygiene or occupational hygiene practice in our workplace is actually giving um, the kind of recognition that it deserves. Um, we will look at the basic authorization for total worker health. Uh, as part of um, our industrial hygiene practice, um, as, in, uh, as industrial hygienists and, um, and some of you who are not in the field of industrial hygiene, the basic characterization is our first step of IH practice. And it's very critical in conducting exposure assessment. So when it comes to our exposure assessment, the first step is basic characterization because it provides us the solid foundation of our exposure assessment. And the way we conduct our basic characterization flows through the rest of the assessment. Uh, however, we are being trained to acquire the skills and knowledge base to execute this effectively. Um, conventional approach, um, in terms of our basic characterization or qualitative health risk assessment, uh, our approach has always been to do the workplace characterization. We look at the exposure patterns, we look at the roots of exposure, we look at the physical workspace, the work tasks, the sources, and worker interaction. However, there are, there are tools, you know, there are tools, um, uh, let me say a validated uh, risk assessment tools and checklists that can help you to be able to do your preliminary exposure evaluation. However, uh, I would like us to shift a bit and, and draw our attention to psychosocial work environment because uh, the psychosocial work environment is something that is, is, is very important, but uh, most often uh, we don't uh, give it uh, the kind of uh, importance that it deserves. But um, I'm very sure that with this, with this uh, ongoing pandemic situation, you know, a lot of a lot of us are training our weight on the psycho psychosocial exposures. In terms of the the physical and the chemical exposures, as I said, there's always a, um, a tools available for you to be able to do that, and we will have a, a look at a look at that. So let's look at the psychosocial psychosocial uh, work environment. So psychosocial work environment, uh, what I normally uh, refer to as a psychosocial exposures, you know, we can also call it psychosocial exposures. So we can also conduct a qualitative risk assessment for psychosocial exposures at work. And with this one, uh, even our safety professionals and health practitioners should be able to conduct this um, assessment following the, the, the industrial hygiene process. So when you want to do your, your basic characterization, and these are some of the things that you can actually focus on when you, are, when you have to conduct your psychosocial um, uh, exposures. You look at the lack of job clarity. You know, a lot of employees are not clear about their roles, their responsibilities, policies and procedures. Even some don't even understand what they want from, from them. And uh, some are even afraid that uh, they, they, they want something that they can't even deliver. So um, it's something that needs to be looked at. If you talk about work demands. Uh, when we talk about work demands, the focus here is on the workload. You know, one needs to accomplish certain tasks uh, within, a, within a working day and uh, a lot of demands. Um, we look at lack of, lack of support. We look at poor work relationship. When we talk about poor work relationship, <laughs> we are looking at you. We have a bully boss. You know, we have a working colleagues that are not nice to you. They don't want to talk to you. 
all of these things affect you one way or the other. Lack of organizational justice. One does something, he's held. Another person does the same thing, oh, it's a different thing altogether. Lack of reward and recognition. So when you want to do your basic authorization for psychosocial exposures, psychosocial work environment, these are some of the things that you can consider during your basic catheterization process. If you look at the, the next process, which is exposure assessment, uh, because uh, this is not a fiscal or a chemical agenda you are evaluating, when it comes to exposure assessment, there are no standards. Like we use OELs, PELs for fiscal and chemical agent for psychosocial. For, uh, for, for fiscal and chemical agent. But when it comes to psychosocial agent, uh, we, are, we can use the Copenhagen uh, psychosocial questionnaire. This uh, Copenhagen uh, psychosocial questionnaire, um, it's, um, it's one of the most widely used psychosocial risk assessment methods. And it's also cited as a reference in document of World Health Organization uh, International Labor Organization, as well as uh, a good example by U, uh, U, uh, European Union Occupational Safety and Health Agency. So if you want to use this one to conduct your exposure assessment, please you can feel free to use uh, this tool because it's, it has a, a internationally, uh, it has international backing and so it's accepted as a, as a tool for you to do your uh, exposure assessment for psychosocial hazards. Um, the, this questionnaire is designed as a tool for workplace psychosocial risk assessment. And um, I also have to mention that uh, it's also an international instrument for research, you know, for the assessment of psychosocial conditions and health promotion at workplaces. Let's not forget that the ultimate goal of addressing the psychosocial hazard is to achieve a safe and healthy working condition for all workers, regardless of the task, the job, or any other social condition. Bear in mind that this can also be used for all kinds of jobs in any industry and for also different uh, uh, sizes of workplace. Uh, from operational perspective, it also provides useful information for prioritization of risk factors and to prompt uh, preventive actions in the workplace. Once again, I also suggest that you read more on, on this questionnaire uh, the, there are agreed guidelines for the use of this questionnaire as an instrument for the prevention of psychosocial risk and a tool for organizational development in workplace. I've, I've, I've slotted there some websites, a link and that you can actually um, uh, get to, to learn more on the, use of, on the use of this questionnaire. Now, how do we deal with, with this psychosocial um, risk exposures. Uh, we also have a hierarchy of controls that is applied to NIOSH uh, total worker health. And I'm sure we are all familiar with uh, the hierarchy of controls, but uh, unfortunately when it comes here, uh, we don't have PP. You know, we're looking at eliminate, substitute, redesign, educate, and encourage. So uh, the hierarchy of controls applied to NIOSH total worker health uh, the first, um, the first control is to eliminate working conditions that threaten safety and health and well-being. The second uh, control is to substitute health enhancing policies, programs, and practices, followed by redesigning the work environment for safety, health, and well-being, followed by educate for safety and health, and finally encourage the personal change. So the, these are the, the hierarchy of controls that are applicable or that can be applied to the NIOSH total worker health. Okay, so let's share our thoughts here and um, we, can, we can wrap up for the day. Um, I want you to uh, go to the chat box. Then let's look uh, in terms of the hierarchy of controls applied to the total worker health, um, where do you see uh, work designs? So you go to the chat box and uh, you type where you see web designs. Do you see web designs for it under first control, eliminate, substitute, redesign, educate, and encourage? Where does web designs fall? Share your thoughts on the chat box.
Yes, we have one from uh, Redesign. Please, can you share? Okay, so uh, let's let's also look at the management systems. Where will management systems fall? Management system. Where will uh, where are we going to place management system uh, with regards to the hierarchy of controls? Okay. Um. Okay, so now let's move to let's move to training, training and awareness. Where will train our awareness fall? Regards our hierarchy of controls, where will training and awareness fall? Yes. So we have educate, we have um, encourage, we have educate, we have administration, training education. Um, substitute, redesign, and encourage. Okay, so let's look at the last one, which is the counseling and therapy. Where will the counseling and therapy fall? Counseling and therapy. Where will counseling and therapy fall? Maybe if you are looking at here at your country, it would have been our, our last resort, kind of. Okay, so um, thank you all for your for your inputs. I think um, we will carry on and um, that brings us to the available tools. As I said, um, those of uh, you practicing um, at IH, you can get some of these tools free on the on the I, uh, American Industrial Hygiene website. Qualitative exposure assessment tool. You can use it to do your basic risk um, risk assessment or your basic characterization. Uh, you can this this are free on the website, so you can always um, go for it and study it and use it to do your basic characterization. Um, in terms of the total worker health, when you go to the NIOSH website, uh, we have a lot of assessment tools. We also have the guidelines for integrated approaches. Uh, if you want to stay connected, we also have um, the the website for it. So those of you who want to learn more on the total worker health. Uh, these are the, the website that you can actually visit to, to learn more on the total worker health. Thanks for your attention. And this brings me to the end of my, my session. Thank you so much for your, for your attention.